Hi, Gary Searman. It's Tuesday, June 19th, and we're going to talk about Egyptian politics. As you may know, uh, they're having a big election in Egypt, still counting the votes. Uh, and, of course, the contenders uh, are two very much opposed men, Ahmed Safiq supporting uh, I guess the last 30 years tradition under Mubarak in Egypt, and he would be a, uh, a statist and a pro-Western diplomat, or relatively so, uh, because uh, the Egyptians have, have had a pretty good time of it for the last 30 years under Mubarak. Uh, they have had a stable society, at least. On the other side, we have Mohammed Morsi representing none other than the Muslim Brotherhood. Now, the voting took place last uh, uh, starting in, on Sunday, and then the counting has been going on ever since, with both sides crying foul. Uh, we have uh, from Debka file, <coughs> Muslim Brotherhood candidate Muhammad Mursi did not wait for the ballots of the two-day poll to be counted before proclaiming himself Monday, June 18th, President of Egypt, and claiming 52.5% of the vote against 47.5% uh, of for his rival. That would be Ahmed Safiq. However, Safiq is now claiming that he has a 1.5% lead in the polls, with the votes still being counted. Uh, street uh, demonstrations are shaping up as the Muslim Brotherhood is getting ready to march for its candidate. And, of course, uh, the platform of the Muslim Brotherhood is make war against Israel. Ahmed Shafiq, on the, er, on the other hand, I think would seek peace with the West following in the tradition of uh, Hosni Mubarak. Well, this is the way it goes. Morsi promised the cheering news conference, quote, a civil, patriotic, democratic, constitutional, and modern state as president of all the Egyptian people. <laughs> Politics. Politics, you know, that's what, just exactly what you would say. Meanwhile, uh, you want to find out what's going on? Watch the armies in the region. Israel Today magazine reports Israeli tanks moving closer to the Egyptian border. Israel on Monday, yesterday, deployed tanks along the Egyptian border following a murderous terrorist attack, reported Israel's Ynet News. Uh, many have seen this move as portending a new hostile reality between Egypt and Israel, of course. And uh, the last time that we saw moves like this was really in 1967. The Six-Day War was preceded by a military buildup on both sides of the Israeli-Egyptian uh, border. So this is, uh, in my opinion, very serious business. Uh, while the deployment of Israeli tanks was clearly meant to protect construction crews working around the clock uh, to put in place a new border fence. Hmm, why would they be putting in place a new border fence along the Israeli-Egyptian border? Rhetorical question, of course. Uh, a lot of people saw the tanks as being protective of the uh, fence builders. The presence of the tanks and the sudden urgency to build the fence could not be seen outside the context of the Muslim Brotherhood's announced presidential victory. Muslim Brotherhood officials declared that their candidate, Mohamed Morsi, had won a strong majority of votes in the weekend presidential runoff election. Well, we've already noted that late news reports, <clears throat> and I'm reading one right here, uh, late news reports have it that uh, uh, Mohamed Morsi is claim, or that is Ahmed Shafiq is reporting a one and a half percent advantage in the election and claims that votes for his side are climbing daily. So it looks like a, a fight may be ahead. Meanwhile, on Israel's northern border, we have Russia, China, and Iran starting joint military uh, maneuvers in the Mediterranean and in the country of Syria. Did you get that? Russia, China, and Iran as a new uh, three-power uh, war machine in the Middle East. Wow, this is amazing. And when you put Egypt, Egypt into, the, uh, into the picture uh, and read the prophecy uh, against Egypt in the latter days, well, what can I say? 
The land of Egypt, writes Ezekiel in Ezekiel 29, 9, and the land of Egypt shall be desolate and waste, and they shall know that I am the Lord, because he hath said the river is mine, and I have made it. And of course, I've said in the past that uh, that statement by Egypt, the river is mine and I have made it, relates to the 1967 completion of the Aswan High Dam, which totally changed the uh, thousands of year old traditions along the Nile River and created a huge lake, Lake Nasser, 150 miles long, uh, which is backed up behind the Aswan High Dam. Of course, this prophecy talks about the destruction of that dam and the subsequent flooding of Egypt. Behold, therefore, I am against thee and against thy rivers, and I will make the land of Egypt utterly waste and desolate. From the tower of Syene, which is Aswan, by the way, unto the border of Ethiopia, no man shall pass through it, nor foot of beast shall pass through it, neither shall it be inhabited forty years. And so there are uh, dark forebodings in Egypt's future. Actually, there are dark forebodings in Egypt's present right now if you read the news and uh, keep your eye on the newspaper because the, the battle is between a traditional Egypt, that is an Egypt that resembles the one under Hosni Mubarak, if Ahmed Shafiq wins the election. On the other hand, if Mohamed Morsi wins the election and the Muslim Brotherhood comes to power, uh, they have already stated that their primary pledge is death to Israel. And, of course, they would march north across the uh, border there, the Israel-Egyptian uh, border. And, by the way, if you have access to a map of the region, check that out, because that long, straight border between Egypt and Israel is, uh, to me, made to order for a, a, a military offensive. And of course, something uh, exactly like that happened back in 1967, starting in the month of June. Well, we're going to be watching this one very, very carefully. We haven't even seen the beginning yet, in my opinion. Uh, on tomorrow's update, we're going to be talking about the military maneuvers between Iran, China, and Russia around Syria. That, to me, is absolutely amazing. So stay with us. And by the way, as we always say, keep looking up.